So, you have heard about 1.18, the economy update. You have heard about 1.19, the science expense update. But have you heard about 1.20, the guilds are gone update. So, to begin with, let's just compare a war from 1.19, the current version, and from 1.20, the beta version. So in current 1.19 wars, you have the attack option, which then if you select it, a bunch of different timers will appear. Now select the timer and all you have left to do is wait. So now, let's say your timer is about to run out. 3, 2, 1. So the next thing that will happen is that you'll get teleported into a war world, which is separate from the main worlds that you can see. And now, once you're teleported, a 30 second timer will begin counting down in order for you to be able to prepare in time to take down the mobs that will arrive later. So then mobs have different variations, but currently the one you'll see in this war is a 1k50, the most basic of defenses. So now that the war has started, the only thing you have left to do is kill all the mobs that will begin spawning, mobs which the guild that own the territory has placed down in order for you to take down and to defend the territory. And when there's no mobs left, a message on the screen will appear saying zero mobs left and you'll get messages on chat saying you have taken control of said territory from said guild. So now that you have taken the territory, all that's left to do is to place mobs for the defenses. You can place any type of mob from the menu you have in there and you'll unlock more mobs the higher level your guild is. So pretty much it's a good idea to take some territories in order to gain XP and also to do slash guild contribute 100% so you can contribute all the XP you gain to the guild directly. So now let's get to how wars work on 1.20. You approach the banner as always, but now you're presented with two options, attack with guild bank or attack using your own emeralds. If you use your guild bank, you must have an HQ placed somewhere. So pretty much if you do not have an HQ anywhere, you're gonna be continuously using your own personal emeralds. So now pretty much once you have selected the attack territory with guild bank, obviously by having an HQ somewhere, the amount of time it takes for the war on that territory to start depends on how far your HQ is. Since take note, every single emerald used for warring has to cross every single territory that it takes to go from your HQ to the territory you're attacking. So let's say you're at, you have your HQ placed somewhere in the corner of the map, let's say somewhere in Dernal Jungle, and now you want to attack something in the other corner of the map, let's say Molten Heights. Well, you might have wars that begin in an hour or something like that because of the extremely excessive amount of territories it takes from things to get from Dernal Jungle to the other corner of the map. So now you have to think wisely before trying to attack things on the other part of the map, like contrary to where you are placed right now. So now, let's say the timer of the territory you attacked is about to end. Pretty much, you'll get also warped into a world, but now this time instead of it being a war world, it'll be a public world, meaning the things you use are not saved. So if you use war consumables of any type or crafted armor of any type, you're gonna either have to constantly repair it or you'll be losing it forever. But anyways, now to the real content since we have finally proven that wars are fixed despite them being broken for the past 2 days the beta has been out for. So pretty much we have 13 seconds left to enter this war and I'll explain a little bit of the things before entering it. You have a 25 seconds timer of grace period to prepare yourself now and after that grace period ends, mobs around the arena will begin spawning and the tower will begin attacking you. So now I will leave you with the video and the footage of it being taken down. Okay, so now let's just go back to one of the points why I say kill warring on 1.20 is about to be broken. Oh. 
So as you could see before, the way worse worked has been completely revamped. But now, let's go to the other details. So as of 1.19, territories produce XP when you hold them, and they also produce emeralds from people grinding in those. XP and emeralds will be 3 times of what a player grinds for the guild that owns it. So now, let's go on 1.20, what do you gain from territories? From territories you only gain on the map, let's see, you only gain materials such as crops or fish or wood and also emeralds on most territories. There are some that do not produce emeralds, but that's a minority. So now you have other territories that pretty much have like wheat everywhere and then the others that have wood everywhere, crops everywhere, fish everywhere and ore everywhere. Although ore is a resource that you cannot find everywhere, which is why this update has a problem and also why like you make multi coast produce both fish and crops and you make coastal trail the same way but you cannot make jungle lake down here where it is where is it yeah jungle lake you cannot make that produce fish and wood like why leave it on wood when it doesn't have like i mean when it has fish and it's a popular piranha grind spot now let's go to silent expense everything here produces wheat what can you grind on the first part of it? Ores. What can you grind on the second part? Wood. What do you grind on the third part? Fish. And on the fourth part you only grind crops. And what does everything produce? Crops only. But now you go to the gate. It produces all four materials. Which is what I mean. You can simply put an HQ there. Buff every single thing with like... Let's say the bonuses from here. Resource rate. Efficient resources. Emerald rate. And now em efficient emeralds. So you can keep that up. And then you place an HQ, you buff the territory to the maximum you can. And now you have a single territory that produces everything. Like, you wouldn't even need to go anywhere else. And now from that, then let's say you want to own the entire select expense because you're a profession skilled. So you just go into bonus, buy, gathering experience bonus. So now all your members grinding in there will have experience bonus. Then let's say mob experience if you want to grind something in there. Now you gain more XP from it. Mob damage, you can deal more damage to mobs, that's useful in some aspects, only if you're gonna plan to grind them. PvP damage, if you're trying to kill people trying to hunt you down while doing professions. So now, to conclude everything, this update, please work a little more harder to it. And now, some aspects that I can just like, not go over is, so you know there's a territory named Road to Time Valley, right? Road to Time Valley. And where does it connect? To South Nibla Woods. And Nibla Woods entrance. But where does it not connect? To Time Valley over here. Like, why are you like this? Why do you not connect Time Valley to Road to Time Valley? And now, territories with literal mine in their name. They do not have ore. And territories with literal junk, like, lake in their name. Do not produce fish. But in change, you have the entirety of Levigor Plains. That's used to farming. The only mining part is the quartz mines. You have the entirety of Levigar producing, like, no, that's light forest. Everything produces wood, so there's no much of a problem over there. You have the quartz mine producing ores, which is nice. But then you have the crop areas of it. They all produce ores. Like, why? And now you go to the swamp. What do you expect the swamp produce? Wood, right? Or fish, even. It only produces ore. And there's no mines in there. Which is what I mean. Please redistribute resources, please work on it harder, and please make things that make sense. So yeah. Now, in conclusion, already established guilds do not have anything to do here since territory XP is gone. But professional guilds, grinding guilds, and pretty much every single new guild in general will have a reason to be on the map if it is for like profession bonuses and combat bonuses. But there is nothing else to it. Like, what else are you gonna do? Sit on your HQ waiting until somebody takes it down to like, to steal all your progress along the years? No, I'm not gonna do that. And I don't expect any already established guild to do that also. So in conclusion, that's why I call this update, the guilds are gone update. Thank you for listening to me, and I'll see you on my next rant or complaint I have.